We begin this Lenten worship with the hymn, Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed, ELW 337. Welcome to our midweek service. In this Lenten season, we continue with our Lenten theme, Perfect Vision in Christ. Our theme today is Good Eyes, Bad Eyes. And so we give thanks for the opportunity to pause in the midst of our Lenten journey for uh, this time of worship and reflection to hear God's Word and to be renewed in the promises of faith. Our service of Holden Evening Prayer begins with the service of light. And all of the music and liturgy will be uh, available to you on the screen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face. You who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Though as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you. God of daybreak, God of shadows, come and light our hearts anew. In the stars that grace the darkness, in the blazing sun of dawn, of the light of peace and wisdom, we can hear your quiet song. Love that fills the night with wonder, love that warms the weary soul, love that bursts of chains asunder, set us free and make us whole. You who made the heavens splendor, every dancing star of night, make 
Father, shine with gentle justice. Let us each reflect your light. Mighty God of all creation, gentle Christ who lights our way. Loving Spirit of salvation, lead us on to endless day. May God be with you. Let us sing our thanks to God. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. are two uh, possibilities for singing in the next piece. Uh, there are two sections, and so you at home can choose which group you'd like to sing along with. I'll sing with group one, and Pastor Jason will sing with group two. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. A reading from Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, beginning at verse 6. 
Train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Whoever sows injustice will reap calamity, and the rod of anger will fail. Those who are generous are blessed, for they share their bread with the poor. We join in singing the first verse of Amazing Grace. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Well, our our basket full of glasses has been restocked for a particular day. That is uh, St. Patrick's Day, which is this week. And I'm going to put on some glasses that reflect this. Oh, I think I see much better now. I think I can see everything much more clearly through these St. Patrick's Day glasses. Uh, But these glasses remind us that uh, through faith, though we may see the world with blurry vision in faith, we see God's promises clearly. We heard a word from Proverbs that said that When you train a child up in the way that they should go, they will continue to go that way. They will go straight and they will continue to do the things uh, that parents have set before them. And so it is even more so in the ways of faith. That when we hear this word, and now for our children especially, when we hear a word of comfort, uh, Christ will make sure that that word is good and true. And so it is in a time and a day that actually may not be full of much celebration as it appears, uh, but maybe more full of uh, uncertainty. I'm not sure what the next day will bring. We have a word that holds us, a savior that holds us closely. And while outside of faith, we may look at the world and wonder what is going on and where can we go in the faith of Christ now. When he says, you are mine, we know it is sure. We know we can go forward and keep going in that way. And so we have for you uh, not only silly glasses uh, for St. Patrick's Day and beyond, but much better uh, glasses of faith. That is a word that keeps you in Christ. And so you are. Let us pray. Lord God, you give us perfect faith And though our vision may sometimes look blurry, we have a vision of heaven with you. We have perfection with you. Keep our children, our families, and all of us in your protection this day. And remind us where our peace is. That is in your promise of salvation. Amen. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel for today is from Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the darkness in you is, if the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. This is the gospel of the Lord. We give thanks for it. You may be seated. 
grace and peace of God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ be yours this day. By the power of the Holy Spirit, these are yours. For you have already died, and that may come as a shocker, given how hard we are working to preserve life these days, which we must do. But now know that in Christ you are held in a perfect promise. You are now full of his grace and his beauty. For Jesus says, in these days you will have trouble. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, for I have conquered the world. And so he has for your sake. By now you've likely heard about the brothers in Tennessee who upon anticipating the huge demand of hand sanitizer given the coronavirus spread in the world in our country, stockpiled a garage full of the stuff with plans to sell it on Amazon at highly elevated prices. I suspect they anticipated making a tidy profit. And from a numbers perspective, this was a brilliant move. Profit margins were indeed high. That is, until there was a community outcry that what they were doing was not fair or at all helpful and they were unable to sell any product online, and they were stuck with pallets full of hand sanitizer with no way to sell them. Their once lucrative product, with perfect timing it appeared to them, was now rendered worthless. While the numbers of their scheme made complete sense, they forgot that business is not all numbers, but it also involves human interaction, relationships, and trust, key elements which they now have in very small supply. Perhaps it's easy to forget in our day of online faceless business transactions that the true gift of commercial activity is not just to line your own pockets, but that God actually protects our ability to buy and sell in order that we support our neighbors in need. This is why we have commercial activity to begin with. Yet the line between stocking up and making sure we have enough for ourselves and giving to those in need can be a bit blurry. Maybe especially in these days, in the fears and anxiety that accompany our best plans to protect ourselves and neighbors from the risks of spreading COVID-19. So Jesus gives us these words from Matthew 6. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And he continues. When your future is secured in Christ, And when your future is known in the heavenly kingdom, rather than with material wealth or acclaims here on earth, then you have, as Christ describes, good eyes, healthy eyes. And then your whole body will be full of light, Jesus says. And finally here we have our connection to the 2020 Lenten theme of perfect vision. Jesus making commentary about good eyes and bad eyes. Now it might be helpful to note if you're a little confused by this that in Jesus' day people believed that light shined out through your eyes from your body to your eyes and that good or healthy eyes were full of light. This indicated a generous or bountiful life. On the other hand, bad eyes indicated stinginess and a preoccupation with oneself. Uh, By the law, we would call that sin. A reading from Proverbs also indicates that a generous person, or more literally translated, whoever has bountiful eyes will be blessed. For he or she shares their bread with the poor. So Jesus gives us a good picture of what good eyes look like. It is generosity. It is a life of bounty a life of sharing, a life of light. The question then, of course, becomes, how can I get such good eyes? And the answer, well, is not completely 
Be generous, though that is part of it. The answer, of course, is that good eyes or 2020 vision of faith actually comes through your ears. And so we come to the sound eye, that faith comes through hearing. And it isn't hearing in general, but hearing a specific word now that Christ has for you, which says, you now, who are tempted to hoard a little more for yourselves, or you who are worried, or you profiteers, whether you be in Tennessee or anywhere else, you sinners, I have come now to take away your sin. And of course, when Christ says this, he means all of us. In Christ, you are forgiven. And it is here that we come to realize that nothing can take away the hope that we share in this particular place, in this particular person, in this particular word. Christ comes now to free you from all that ails you. Now, what does such freedom look like? I was forwarded this snippet of a writing by Martin Luther, and he was describing how he responded to the plague in his day. It should be noted that while many of those who were able to leave Wittenberg when the plague came uh, left, a logical action, I might add, uh, but Luther and his wife who was pregnant, Katie, stayed and they cared for those in need. And here's what he wrote about how he came to this decision. He said, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance inflict and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me and I have done what he has expected of me. And so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person. I shall go freely, as stated above. See, this is such a God-fearing faith, because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. Such faith as you have now is neither brash nor foolhardy but responds to your neighbors in need. Your responses to your neighbors will vary based on your neighbor's need and based on your own risk. But know this now. Your eyes have been made beautiful, bountiful, and full of light because Christ makes them so. Which means Christ gives you a new heart this day and a new hope, and a new peace. Lean not on your own possessions or anxieties, but on his word, which has already granted you victory. Amen. Our hymn is Dearest Jesus at Your Word. It is hymn 520 in our hymnal. at your word we have come again to hear you let our thoughts and hearts be stirred and in glowing faith be near you as the promises here given draw us wholly up to heaven all our and sight lie in deepest darkness shrouded till your spirit breaks the night filling us with light unclouded all good thoughts and all good living come but by your gracious giving radiance of Light of light from God proceeding, Jesus and your blessed light, help our hearing, speaking, heeding, that our prayers and songs may please you, as with grateful hearts we
At this time in our worship service, we pause for a reception of our offering. As you can see on the screens, there are multiple ways in order to offer your gifts. We will pause just for a time of reflection in the ways we offer ourselves in many forms to the work of the church and serving one another in need. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O Peace. 
peace and salvation we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For peace between nations, for peace between peoples. God of mercy, hold us in love. For us who are gathered to worship and praise you. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all of your servants who live out your gospel. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who govern that justice might guide them. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor in service to others. God of mercy, hold us in love. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, Give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your will be done done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give Give us us today our our daily daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives.